All right, our next guest is getting quite a bit of attention this afternoon. That is because he has managed to figure out how to replace the AT&T chip in an Apple iPhone, which means, of course, you can use your uh, iPhone on another network. George Hotz of Glen Rock, New Jersey, joins us now. And it is so great to see you in person because it's amazing what you have done. Um, what, what made you decide to decide you were going to be the one who's going to hack into the iPhone? Well, I didn't even like, I didn't decide that. I just wanted a, I first bought the iPhone. I was at a shopping mall with my friend who waited three hours outside an Apple store. And you really wanted one. I really wanted one. I mean, he had AT&T, so he went home. He was like, I could call people on my iPhone. And I was like, oh, I have T-Mobile. I can't really call people on my iPhone. So I was like, I'm going to unlock the iPhone. And oh, so that you could use the so iPhone on use, your family. Do you have a T-Mobile exactly. or something? We have a T-Mobile family plan, and those termination fees are insane, and those AT&T charges an extra twenty dollars a month for iPhone customers. So you know, let's just make it work with T-Mobile. Okay, well, I might have thought that myself too, but then I wouldn't have uh, gone to the. Uh, I wouldn't have had yeah. the ability to do what you did. Uh, okay, there you are on YouTube. Everyone's going to be watching that. I think <laughs> you're talking to everyone. So, so here is uh, what looks to me to be a, a ripped-up iPhone. Well, I um, well, first of all, I'd also like to say, if it was really just about the AT and T, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have done it. If it were really just about using it with T-Mobile, I wouldn't have done it. But this was fun. This was this was a good use of a summer. Like I became obsessed with unlocking this. It thing. was fun. So here, the uh, okay, this is actually the inside here of an yeah. iPhone, and um, you can see. These two wires right here are the test point, mm -hmm. which I discovered that you have to short them together and then run some software. I wrote. These you can barely see on yeah. air, everyone. They're kind of on the top of my They're finger like here. They're like super small wires. You just uh -huh. connect them together and run some software, and you get your iPhone unlocked. Yeah. Okay. So, so all right. And, and then there's this is the chip card here. So you you pulled this apart yeah, this and figured the, it out. This is the SIM okay. card right here. You can just that's just a T-Mobile one. Okay, so here, here, here's the thing. Today, we've got Apple shares up, and I think you're, you're saying you might be the reason. Two and a half percent. I don't know. I mean, more people want iPhones now if they can use them with any sort of provider. Right, and, you, and you are, you're telling me right now you're ready to call out uh, Mr. Jobs. I would love to have a talk right now with Steve Jobs. Man to man. Man to man. That's the kind I Steve like. Steve Jobs, this is the call out. We're, we're, we're telling you that because you haven't talked to him yet. You haven't talked to AT&T. None of them have called you. No, I haven't had any contact with any companies iPhone related at all no one's no no lawsuits nothing well this is completely legal actually um covered under the DMCA uh, of since November 2006 is cellular that the digital millennium mm. cellular some the copyright act digital millennium copyright act that's the one yes um cellular telephone unlocking and the reverse engineering required to do the cellular telephone unlocking is completely legal Hmm. So. I wonder what AT&T thinks about that. All right, let me ask you what your parents thought. I mean, did you have a job this summer, or did you literally uh, just do literally, this? Literally, I worked on the iPhone. There were nights I was going to sleep at 9 in the morning and waking up at 4 in the afternoon. Just and, to do this? Yeah. And, and, all right, and here's the other thing I want to ask you. You could have sold this code. This code to unlock this was, was very lucrative, but you're not. You, put it, you, you posted it for free on yeah. the Internet. Like, that's what I really believe in. I really believe that information should be free. And I tried to make the method as simple as possible for everyone to follow. I mean, the only way, I'm never going to even unlock iPhones for people. I put this world's second unlocked iPhone here on There's eBay. only two. This, is the se this one's on eBay. And this I is think the first one, which I keep in my pocket, and this is the second one. Um, and... Other than that, I have no plans of making any money off of this. And if I find an easier way to unlock the iPhone, I'll post it on my blog. And are you headed to college? I'm headed to RIT tomorrow, actually. So Tomorrow. Well, I guess this is a fun end to your summer vacation. This, the timing couldn't have been better. Well, thank you so much. I, uh, I appreciate your coming in. This is very fun. I never thought I would ever see the inside <laughs> of an iPhone. I have to say it almost... It almost looks much uh, much more simple than I yeah, might have Yeah, like you imagine imagined. a lot more in there. It's just those yeah. two little circuit boards. All right, well, well you know what, George? Battery. Thank you so much. It was wonderful to talk to you. Thanks and, a lot. and congratulations. George Hotz there. Uh, I suppose I should say congratulations. Don't see me too. Don't sue me too, Apple. <laughs> Mr. Jobs. John Dvorak is a columnist with Market Watch. CNBC Silicon Valley Bureau Chief Jim Goldman uh, is here as well to talk about it. All right, so guys, uh, I have to say, I'm pretty speechless here. Well, yeah, that, I mean, you look unusual. at uh, what George has been able to do, and this is pretty impressive stuff. It <laughs> said, you know, he has said it took him better than 500 hours to, to do the deed, if you will. And, uh, yeah, this is uh, a little unnerving for Apple. And i got to tell you also that uh, if you read the blogs and if you see what's been going on on the Internet, a lot of people have been trying this. A lot of companies are out there trying to come up with aftermarket kits that allow you to do exactly what young George has been successful in. And if that's the case, this becomes a much bigger problem for Apple. But if it's 
it's just George out there with this neat little solution, this may not be as easy as people might think, and you may run the risk of ruining that new $500 investment. All right, so John Dvorak, here's the thing. Uh, you know, George is still here, but he, he, I believe, now I'm paraphrasing here, so he can jump in if I'm wrong. I think he said he could do this in about an hour, although it might yeah. take some folks like you 12 hours. Uh, well, me and yeah. everybody else. Actually, I wouldn't do it. I, mean, I don't think anyone's going to do it. I think uh, busting this phone open and then spending 12 hours soldering, which is non-trivial for most people, is not going to be done by more than a few hundred people. This is a meaningless exercise. And, this is, and he knows himself that the real key to this thing is finding some uh, way of just coding in and unlock code and getting these phones unlocked without beating but, them up, breaking them open. But, George, what you're saying is this is about... Freedom of, of information, everyone being yeah. able to have the right to use this anywhere you want. He's saying it, you, you said it was digitally, in your view, protected, well, copyright protected. Yeah, like, um, well, the idea is there probably will be a software unlock and it probably will be found soon. I personally am not working on it. This is rather difficult, but the instructions are there. And if you have the time and patience, you can do this. And they're yeah, very Aaron, been... if you also listen, mm -hmm. if, if you listen to what George is saying, and, and I think this is, you know, this is a really intriguing kind of story, but as far as financial, what the impact is for Apple and indeed the cell phone industry, I don't think it's going to be massive. This is, again, it's hardware and software, and a lot of people aren't going to bother spending this kind of time. You're not going to see tens of thousands of people buying the iPhone. Now yeah. they can use it on the T-Mobile network. I think this is fun. I think this is, you know, just goes to show you what... An an intelligent kid with a lot of time on his hands is, a, is truly <laughs> capable of. But more power to you, George. I think you did great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I congratulate you too, George, but you know, you know as well as I do that we're, we're looking for something that's a little easier. Yeah, no, I understand that a lot of people won't be yeah, able to Yeah, so when you come up with method, that, but... I'm sure there's a lot of venture capitalists out here in the Silicon Valley who would love to talk to you. So uh, you come up with a neat little <laughs> software kit. He's just going to college tomorrow, software right? Fix. Maybe you really uh, will follow in the footsteps of Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that's happens, amazing. happens. Just... And don't expect a call from <laughs> AT&T, by the way. Don't yeah, expect right, a call from AT&T. That's, that's, that's they the bad They don't call Steve anybody. Steve Jobs might give you a pat in the back, but I don't think AT&T will. <laughs> All no, right. I don't think so either. <laughs> Thanks to everybody.